It's all prep to be able to be spontaneous on set. The better prepped you are, you can be spontaneous on set. What this is Ranveer? Ranveer is a fourth or fifth take guy. I drive my editor mad sometimes because I have 20 cuts of a certain thing. Vikram, first of all, welcome. Thank you so much for making time for the Himalayan Film Festival. So excited to have you here. No, I'm delighted to be here. I'm so happy. It's a lovely place and I'm, I'm, I mean, the more we spread uh, films everywhere around the world, I mean, that's uh, it's good. Brownie points for all of us. Yes, yes. Vic, I think of you as one of our most accomplished and eclectic storytellers. Uh, you know, you made award-winning films, you've made groundbreaking series, you've even made a superhero film, uh, you've, you're a showrunner, you're a producer of short films. Uh, there's so much that you do. And I'm sure at any given time, there's so many different things that swirl around you asking for attention. So I want to start by asking, how do you decide that this is the one? Oh, uh... I guess the short answer is is uh, uh, sounds cheesy. Is, is love? I think that there it is, is love. It no, is it's love. falling in love. It's falling in love with an idea or a story or um, an image uh, or a, a moment or there's something that you really want to say. It's that's it's also it comes from lots of times it comes from a, a deep rooted anger as well. A deep an emotion. I mean, so it's not love is the positive emotion. There's also a sense of. Um, Bhavesh Joshi, for example, came from a lot of anger about being in Bombay and this is, you know, 2010, 2011, things were happening, yeah. there was a lot of, you know, there was a, and it came from there, so, um, yes, but there is, it, it always comes from some emotion that you feel when you are either reading something or hearing something or thinking of something or, or feeling something, so, and, and then, then you follow through on that, so, uh, there's an immediate visceral thing of like, oh, I love this, I want to do this. And then you, then you wait two months. <laughs> and if you still feel the same way two months later, then... So you have to wait two months. You kind of have to, because of the effort it takes. Yeah. The, the effort in, in writing, the effort in thinking, the effort in putting that time down and stuff like that, it has to be worth it um, end of the day. Uh, so yes, the, the initial instinct to be able to go out there and saying, I want to do this is great, but you sometimes I experience tells you that, okay, hang on, think about it. Let it, let it, you know, ruminate and stuff, but don't, don't get over yeah. things. So, <laughs> so you, you described uh, a movie as a relationship uh, for, you know, for a year or a few years. What is a series? Oh, a, se a series, if you, <laughs> if you're involved, if you're, if you're going to be doing multiple seasons of a series, then that's a, that's a marriage. I'm saying that that's a, that's, um, it is. It's the same, in a sense, it's just longer. I think a series is more intense when it comes to the writing process. It's more intense in the production process because, as always, you need to shoot a lot more in a lot less time. Uh, sometimes there's multiple directors, so many people are doing many things. Um, getting all that together you know, into one cohesive voice, uh, post-production takes time. So yeah, a film, if a film takes you a year, a series takes you two. So, so how long was the shoot for Jubilee? The Jubilee shoot was 90 days uh, for 10 episodes. But Jubilee is a bit of a rare uh, 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 thing because two things. One was it was, uh, it was greenlit by Amazon in 2016, literally a week after Netflix had greenlit Sacred Games. So wow. I had to, That's a good problem to have. It's a good problem to have, except I had to put it on hold and Aparna Puro didn't talk to me for a couple of years. Uh, <laughs> so... <clears throat> Um, so yeah, so then, and then 2019, once, you know, once we release season two of Sacred Games, Aparna is like, now done, can we start? So, yeah. um, and then we started prep in 2019, and of course we had the pandemic in 2020, we had, um, we had half a pandemic in 21. So by the time we actually started shooting proper, it was July 21 when we started shooting. Finished in Jan 22, and then we're ready with post-production because of the VFX and all that kind of stuff, we're kind of ready. So yeah, overall, if, you, if it was one intense period, I guess I would say two, two and a half years. But that means you still have to be in love. I mean, this 100%. is a very long marriage. 100%. You have to be in love because, and that's where it, the material really matters. You cannot, you cannot be in love that long with a project if you're not excited by, um, by the potential of it or by what you're going to go out there and achieve. By, essentially by the writing. If you're excited by the writing of it, 
um, and what you're going to be able to do in it visually and with the music and with the songs and great actors and if there's an excitement overall, not just with you. I think that's, um, I think as a, as a creator or a director, it's a given that you're going to be excited about your material because you had something to do with its gestation. You've had, you've been either, a, you've been, you've had the idea or you've been a part of the writing or you're going to take that writing and as a director go and convert it into a visual medium. That's already exciting for you. But that excitement has to trickle down to your, uh, your production team, your assistant directors, your cinematographer, your editor, everybody's going to be a part of that journey with you for the same amount of time as you are. Um, that, and for that you need, you need, you need solid, like really, really good writing that can excite people and, you know. Because the energy has to go all the way down. Yeah, yeah, it has to trickle down. Part of that becomes your job as a director also to make sure that people are excited and they're happy and there's no, you know, uh, no one's got any problems in that, but that's a, that's a part of, I think that's a part of directing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you were asked what advice you have for young directors, people who are starting out, um, you said, write, 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 shoot, 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 edit, edit, edit. <laughs> Which is, I think, fabulous advice. But what I want to ask you, Vic, is how do you also, while you write, 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 shoot, 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 edit, 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 keep the faith, right? Because so much of this is just believing in yourself, handling rejection day after day, not having people take your calls, having no platform to exhibit at. How do you just keep going? It honestly, it, it is tough. I have to say, it's it's very tough to keep going. And um, I've been through this process, and I think what what um, what helped me back then is exactly doing the stuff that that. Um, is, is the writing, is, is the shooting, is the editing. Um, because if, if you believe, and you, you have to, you have to have faith that things are gonna work out. You have to have faith that this is all gonna be, there's an end goal to this. Um, if you don't have the faith as an end goal to this, then this is not the career for you because it is extremely hard to get things greenlit. It's extremely hard to get things done. But that should not stop you from fine tuning your, your talent. Um, Directing is not just walking on set um, and saying that this is the shot, but even when you're saying this is the shot, there's a reason, but you're saying it because you know it. You know it because you've experienced it and you've gone through um, the process of having that multiple times. So I would, um, um, I, and you probably know this, but there was a, uh, when I got married in 2005, I actually, and this was, when, you know, we didn't have iPhones and all that sort of stuff. And uh, I asked for a video camera as a wedding gift from, from my in-laws. And, and Did you get it? Yeah, yeah, they first looked at me like I'm a little, like, like who, who asked for a video camera? Um, but best gift ever, because all the years between getting married, when I thought I was ready to make my film already, till I actually made my film in 2009 when we shot Rodan. Um, those, so those four years, and those four, actually more than, more than four, four, five years was, um, I had to, all I did was shoot, I'd shoot, friends' weddings. I would shoot, um, a, a, a cousin of mine is going racing in Formula Maruti in Coimbatore in Chennai and I'm following him with that camera and shooting that so, film. So wait, there are people out there whose wedding video has been shot by you? Yeah. With a DVD. I've shot the, I've, I've shot the wedding video. I've edited, down, I've edited it under a DVD with music. I've made the DVD, printed it. I've designed the DVD cover as well. And I've given the DVD to them. I love it. <laughs> it's a I full, love it. It's a full movie making thing that you do because you want to see. And this is not just once. They're like, I'm going to edit this multiple times. Um, so that's how, and by doing that, I am figuring out my craft. I'm figuring out shooting. I'm figuring out editing. I'm understanding how to work Final Cut Pro on my laptop. Um, so all of that is happening on, on the one side. And then I'm writing a lot. I think I wrote, there was a time, I think, in, 2007, 2008, I must have written like five full screenplays just because what else do you do? Yeah. And you need to figure this out and you need to sort of like work that. Um, of those five or how many of the screenplays you write, um, you won't make all of them. There will be two of them that will be love. Those you will make. And those is what eventually you have to keep pushing to people to sort of like do it. But when you... Ready to make, when you say you're ready to make a film, you have to be really ready to make a film. And honestly, that's the only thing is that you have to keep going and keep working and keep practicing. And that's and it. And keep hoping. And keep hoping, yeah. yeah. No, but keep trying, definitely. Keep making the phone calls, keep going out there, keep shooting the films. 
um, keep keep making the shorts that can actually be seen at places that can that can uh, show people what is there. Keep um, one of the things that we never did um, because there was a. I guess this. I guess the industry when we were starting to make film was wasn't as um, structured as it is right now. When you have big companies or big studios that actually have um, development teams and executives who are there to be able to re to listen, and they're now trained, or at least they're being trained to read pitches and to listen to pitches. And when when I started making films, there, that system wasn't there. You wrote a screenplay, and you expected that people would read the screenplay, or you would do an elevator pitch in five minutes, or you do a narration in half an hour, or a two-hour narration. Um, what, so what's changed now is, the, is the, the system of the pitch is something that has changed, which I think is for the better. I think the idea of being able to make a pitch um, that you can, which gives people an idea like, oh, this is my film, or this is my series, and these are my characters, and this is what I want to say, and this is the look and the feel, and you can put pictures there, and you can put you know little trailers there. I think that, um, is a good thing, uh, and it also prepares filmmakers now to be able to really go out there and verbally pitch their films. It's not the easiest thing to do in the world. It's, it takes a lot of courage to take your idea and to go out to a stranger and tell them your idea. Um, and we had the same fear when we were doing, when we were, you know, initially we were like, oh my God, someone's going to steal my idea. But now because it's a, it's a more structured system uh, with checks and balances in place, I think it's it's a necessity now for younger filmmakers to definitely work on their pitch, work on their log lines, work on how am I going to be able to tell the story in the best possible way in five minutes, where I can show them my excitement, I can show what it's about. Um, so you, you have to, in a sense, be able to perform a little. Yeah, it's, uh, you have to. And that, and, and that is, um, it's, it's not ideal in a certain sort of way, um, but what it does is that it, it, the other person can then sense your excitement. They can sense your excitement, they can sense your passion for something, will only honestly come from, um, from when they hear you talk about it. And this, is, this, is, this realization came to me as well because it's like, okay, to a stranger, I could never do it. I would just you know, close down and, and, and close up. But that same idea, if I'm narrating it to my friends or my coworkers or Ishika, or you know anybody, they can sense. They're like, but you, this really works for you. They can sense that excitement. You sense the excitement yourself, um, and you, just, you, need, you need to, I, I guess, channel that into being able to tell it to a stranger that way. Yeah. 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 So your film school, Vikram, was Sanjay Leela Bansali, right? You said that you worked 16 hours a day, two and a half years on Ham Dil De Chuke Sanam. What are the sort of fundamental lessons you learned there that? you are still, you know, that are holding you in good stead even now? Oh, uh, prep with Sanjay. He's it's, a crazy it's, it's prep all, person. It's all prep person. It's all prep to be able to be spontaneous on set. The better prepped you are, you can be spontaneous on set. Um, so I think with Sanjay, it's the overall sort of like top-down um, perspective on filmmaking. Um, so the one, yeah, I, I mean, I learned from him um, planning uh, in terms of whether writing it, the prepping of it, short breakdowns, uh, also music sittings, music, how to work, uh, background score, um, because he would he would make us, for example, do things like take the edit, and this was again, this is now 25 years ago, uh, we were still in the analog world, it wasn't digital, we were editing on a Steenbeck, which is 35 millimeter film, which I don't know how many of you even know what that is, but, um, so physical film being cut and we're taking reels to mixing, we're taking reels. So Sanjay would, for example, want to be able to see his film in a rough mix. And it was more of like, go and do it. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What am I supposed to do over here? You know, it's like, no, go to Anand Studio. no idea. I had no idea. But that's part of the fun of it. Like, he, throw, he throws you into the deep end. And he's like, I want a rough mix of my film with, um, with um, birds for day, crickets for night the sync music that I've already put on the Steenbeck, now go and do it. So I would say, okay, fine. And you go to Anand Studio, and then you meet, uh, I forget who it was, and you, you meet the guy there, and he's like, this is what Sanjay Bansali wants. He's like, okay, fine, come with me. He takes you into a studio. Then you know, okay, there's a loop playing upstairs of birds and crickets and so on and so forth. And you start putting this stuff together. And that's how you figure it out. Yeah. Um, and it was great, because it's like, you, you, yeah, you're a little sort of like deer in the headlight for a beginning, but then you're like, okay, I'm gonna figure this stuff out. And, um, 
there's no wrong answers in a sense, you know, over there. So um, that was that was fun. That that learning all of that, and so it's a complete. It's like going to film school. Like so it was two and a half years, starting with the writing, then the prep, then the music sitting, then shooting, set construction, all the design ideas, choreography, which choreographer for what, how 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 are they doing it? How does Sanjay? How do you? How do you talk to a choreographer? How do you talk to a cinematographer? How do you talk to a production designer? How do you talk to a costume designer? What are the things you're looking for? Um, that learning was, uh, was, was priceless. Yeah. And then there's the shoot, you know, for which you're... In the beginning, I'd be sort of like, he's shooting there and I'd be standing over here. And after the second day, he's like, why are you here? The shoot's there. He said, if you're not doing anything, you have to be next to the camera. The only place you learn is by being next to a camera. And again, priceless sort of advice where you're just like, you're okay, fine. And so you're just standing around. You're there for if anybody needs anything, you'll run around and get it. And then eventually, yes, you're now handling juniors and you're doing all that kind of stuff, which is the standard, I think, shooting process. Uh, and then there's post-production, which you realize that's where the film is really made and put together and the constant edit changes and stuff. And so, I mean, yeah, so from a craft perspective, a lot. But also, just learning from Sanjay, like how a director never ever stops thinking about his movie. You don't ever, in that entire process of from when you've got the idea to when you actually stop making it, you wake up every morning thinking about how you can change. If something's bothering you, how do you make it better? If something is a moment you don't like, how do you, how do you, how do you execute this scene? How do you sort of like do that? How do you, you know? So that is something that I saw, and that's something. It's an that's obsession, still, right? It is an obsession. It is an. It can be an. It can become a bit unhealthy after a point, but you have to know when to, when to stop, when to take your breaks, when to switch off. You know, when to switch on. So I, one of the things I actually like to do right now is work on, not just one thing at the same time, but a couple of things because it helps you just switch away from from um, from what you're doing in that moment, onto something else, whether it's writing something else, or editing something else. Um, because it does two things. One is it gives you a certain objectivity when you come back to what you were doing, where you're not completely lost in all the words and the stuff where you're like, okay, I can, I can see the problem here and I can, I can do that. So it leaves you uh, objective and also because you feel that there's not enough time, it leaves you very spontaneous, which is good sometimes. You take, you take spontaneous decisions, which otherwise you would have thought of it for, like, let me think of this for three days. <laughs> Your crew is like, but sir, we don't have time. So you take those spontaneous decisions, you know, and, and that's nice, to having that, that kind of stuff is useful. Yeah. So, Vikram, in Bhavesh Joshi, there's a dialogue that uh, heroes paida nahi hote, bante hain. Is that true for directors as well? <laughs> um, I, I mean, I guess so. I guess uh, if I have to take... Yeah, I mean, most of the, most of the directors I know are... Um, Instinctive, but that instinct also, I think, comes from years of honing your instinct. Um, I think, and I, I said this once to someone, I was like, I don't think, with the, especially when it comes to a director, I don't think there's anything, there's no talent. You, people say you're a talented director, and I'm like, I don't think that's talent, I think that's ability. And I think there's marginal difference between, between the two. My ability to direct comes from... Um, whether it's been my being an assistant director or being uh, having worked, you know, from so the advantages that I had is that I've, I've been an assistant director since I was 18 years old. So therefore, by the time I made my film when I was 32, I've had 14 years of experience of understanding. That's that gives me the ability then to be able to know certain things. Um, I was a I'm I'm still I am. I mean, but I, I started shooting photos on a film camera when I was 10 years old. Really. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I was, I was given one of those hotshot kind of cameras and I'd go off and it was super expensive, but my father indulged me, again, thankfully. Um, so by the time I was, again, 18, 19, I was a pretty accomplished photographer. I was like, you know, I was shooting photos for the art of it. Uh, so again, so that's given me the, the ability to be able to see films from, to see the world from a visual perspective, to see the world through a lens. But it also took six to seven years of just playing around to figure it out. Um, and then, yes, then when you work, then the idea of like, okay, you have to write, 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 write to know what you want, or you have to shoot, shoot, shoot to know what you want to do, and edit, edit, edit to know what you want to end up doing. Um, but the fact that I've had the, the time to be able to do that over you know, many years has given me the ability to be able to make films right now. Um, yes, and then it comes to your instinct. Your instinct on certain things is your instinct. I think that's something that can't change. But I don't think directors are born with a sense of talent ke, 
they're going to go out there and paidaishi kinda, brilliant ha paidaishi brilliant Koi nahi hota hai so either i mean in the case of your great masters of of the west whether it's a, a spielberg um or uh, spielberg who was given his first video his first film camera as what 8 mm when he was like 8 or 10 years old would shoot home movies which is what makes him a phenomenal director or the fact that scorsese because he was an asthmatic child only had the movies as a place to go to so sort of like do it so there's always there's so, some some back story there's a back story there's always some back story that that's given them this wealth of knowledge and this disability that they so you come with a wealth of knowledge and then you have the ability to do it or you've worked your way up and then you figure out your knowledge but either way there's some working um anurag is another one in as an example of someone who's so lost in his books and his movies that he came to bombay to be a writer in the first place it's only after he wrote satya where he was an assistant director then assisted uh vinod on um, mission on, on mission kashmir figure that out then went to make his first film everybody's like but you've never really assisted to make your first film he's like i don't need to because his wealth of knowledge that's come from his reading and his writing and his observing on set of how directors work gave him that ability to just and also see to the pants he's like so okay fine i don't know how to set a shot it's okay i'll figure it out <laughs> how married are you to the script because the stories i've heard about sanjay bansali is that prep 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 but then he'll come on a set and then he will say ye theek nahi hai change everything i did this interview once with ranveer and priyanka who had were at that time also shooting for bajira right and priyanka was apparently in tears because she would prep for a scene like pages would she would learn and then he would say ye nahi chahiye we're rewriting everything yeah. <laughs> are you that man no not 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 every day of shoot i'm not that i mean i i feel that once you have a script um there's a reason to stick to what you're sticking to um i think there's that um because in that moment in time when you lock the script and said this is the script that i want to make um there was a reason you did that there's a reason that you had that in place when you're shooting there's so many pressures on your head at that point of time oh it's about time and money and availability and there's a sense which is why the objectivity counts a lot because there's a sense that when you get subjective into a script you start to get bored of your own material you start to get you start you see those same five words coming and you're like oh my god this is this is rubbish why aren't we doing something better and then you go and change everything on set because you want to be excited on the day um i think i work in the sense that yes i in my mind i'm like there's a there's a day i there's a day and a moment in time when i decided that this was the scene i wanted to shoot and i'm going to trust that i'm going to trust that version of me i'm going to trust that, that that version of me knew what he was doing on the day and why it is so unless it's really bothering me that i'm like this is just not working because of x y z because every change you make today has a consequence tomorrow yeah as a consequence i mean you might make a change on page 2 of a script which has pay off on page 40 and you're not seeing it in that moment and suddenly the editing table you're like damn it should have done that it's happened to me it's happened i've chosen in in um, i've chosen not to shoot a certain scene or a certain moment in a film i'm like no i don't need it you know and in that day i'm convinced i don't need it and i'm convincing everybody that i don't need it and then suddenly the editing table i'm like i i i should have had it i really missed that moment because that brought that which brought that um so i have said you know what i'm going to trust the writer uh who one day wrote that script <laughs> and do it and uh, and go through with it so that's my that's my process yeah. and how do you decide your camera movements um camera movements is essentially what's my motivation to move am i following somebody uh am i landing in a place before they land in that place am i trying to land in that place as they are coming to uh land am i revealing something from somewhere as i'm going to come and 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 place over here um do i do i want to arrive at something do i want to go away from something so it's all about the motivation that you want in that moment am i following is there a director's motivation to be able to say here audience you're seeing something else you're seeing an 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 auditorium with an audience there and i'm going to move it and eventually i hear these people talk i don't know who they are and i come and reveal bikin anu um on on the stage so my motivation then to sort of like reveal the fact that there's something happening from an audience perspective to come over here um you could go the reverse way as well It's, we could be talking here the camera could be right there us talking and go through to go and find one specific person who's listening to us uh in the audience it's all about the motivation in the moment are you doing character motivation or director motivation or or do you want 
a sense of energy with the character or is the character doing something they shouldn't be doing and then you're sort of moving with them or against them. So you question every movement. There's never like, I just feel like this. Is that No, it's not that. You don't know. You have to question. You know the certain amount of like you want to be able to move. So you're moving in again to show a place or you're moving out for a certain sense of emotion of leaving a place. It's, a, it's, it's so, it, I mean, the camera movements, is, it's such a beautiful thing. It's so, uh, it's so subtle. It's so subconscious. The audience doesn't know why you're doing it. You know why you're doing it. You know the thing that you want to do. The audience just gets it. They just understand it. But it has to be, I don't think, just, just the idea of moving camera. I've seen it so often where, oh, right, left, to here, to there, and there, to there, and there. I'm like, but why? Why are we doing that? <laughs> what, is, what is the motivation for that camera to move? Yeah, this is true. Uh, you know, I was talking to Raj and DK. And they said to me that they treat actors like ice out of a fridge. Which means that the first two takes are the best ones. There's great chemistry, there's great acting, performance. Ye wo. Uske baad it's a diminishing returns. <laughs> huh? Uske baad, matlab, achha kuch is, itna nahi hota. And they said they don't want to prep, they don't do table reads, because for them, the, that moment and the spontaneity of that moment is what matters. Now, you don't work like that. You do a lot of prep. You get your actors, you get your crew, you rehearse everything. How did you arrive at this method, which is obviously individual to each director? How do you actually find what works for you? Uh, eventually comes down to experience. But I think one of the things that I saw, I worked with Deepa Mehta on when she shot Water. Um, you were an assistant on that film. I was an assistant the first time around. I was her assistant the first time around. We were doing it in Banaras and then it didn't happen and it stopped. And then I was her choreographer. I was actually shooting songs the second time it happened in Sri Lanka. And one thing that I saw that she did, which I, which is, which is, I still do it till today, was blocking with the actors every morning on a film set. If your call is at 7 o'clock in the morning, what normally happens on film shoots is that at a 7 o'clock call, your actors will go straight to makeup, uh, director will come, they'll start lighting on set for the first shot. Then the actors will come. Then an assistant or the director will tell the actors that you're sitting here, you're standing there, you're going there. Um, and then you start shooting without anybody having any sense of really what are you doing in the day, you know? And sometimes an actor will be like, but what if I, instead of what if walking from there to there, I was sitting here first and then I get up and walk. And now you've got a moment there where you're lit for the shot. So changing the lighting is a time consuming process. Director in his mind has already worked out something that he thinks he's not so known. It's going to change everything else. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of effort. So, and what I saw Deepa doing is blocking where at 7 a.m. everybody's on set. Um, your actors are there, your director's there, your first AD is there, your cinematographer. Everybody who needs to know about the scene is there at the moment. You sit and you're like, okay, what are we doing in this scene? We're reading and you're going to get up from there and go over there. But what if I don't want to get up from there and want to work? Do you want to do this differently? Do you want to do that differently? Do you feel you should shout here? Do you feel you should be subtle over here? What do you want to do? As a director, when I see actors do it, automatically my short breakdown is, is in my head where you're like, this is the camera move that we need to do from here to here. This is there. So me and my DOP have clarity. The actors have clarity. My first AD knows, has clarity. Immediately after that, I make my short breakdown. I'm like, okay, we're going to be doing this scene in eight shots. He knows eight short means. It's just, it gives everyone so much clarity in the day. So how long does this take? Half an hour. So it's half an hour of investment which gives everybody... It's everybody. Yeah. The actors are going, after that, the actors are going into makeup already thinking of the scene. They have it in their head. They're preparing it in makeup. When It's not that they're coming in blank about what are we shooting today. It's not that we're like, what are we shooting today? It's like, you know what you're shooting when you're in makeup. Everybody on set is already prepared for it and it goes, your day goes very, very fast um, after that. I like to prep for spontaneity. I think, I think there, is a, there is a sense of like being prepped enough. At least if I know what I'm doing in the scene, what I want to achieve in the scene, um, then on the day one can change it. You know, I, I, mean, I, I know where Rajan Diga are coming from. There are times I tell actors that don't prepare, by all means prepare, but don't get so prepared that on a, on a snap you can't switch. You can't suddenly say, oh, I can play this comically or I can play this with sarcasm. You know, don't, don't be so locked into a way of doing it um, that that uh, that you get stuck. No, so you're fully prepped, but you're open to all possibilities when the actual shoot is happening. Uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not prepped to a point of storyboarding. I don't do that. I don't do storyboarding. I, a because I can't draw, so I can't. And then if somebody else does a storyboard, and I get very irritated. I'm like, that's not right. That's the wrong frame. <laughs> Actors don't look like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so and because I can't draw, then I'm like, fine. What's the point? So if I if I really have to do it for a heavy VFX scene where my guys like please give me a storyboard and I'm like fine here yeah. um, 
but I don't. I mean, I know what I want in the scene from from all the Q and A's that all my ads have done. And okay, this is the set, and these are the action props that we will need. But the on the actual days when you go in and you figure it out, because it leaves you, you know, nice and spontaneous. It leaves you objective. It helps to sort of like not have it stuck in your head that I really, really want this. I mean, you know, okay, I want this scene to be. You know what you want from the scene. You want a sadness from the scene, or you want happiness from the scene, or you want a sense of like anger or whatever. You know that, but it's better to kind of keep it. Also, every keep actor is different. Every actor is different. Um, right. So then, how do you match energies and methods? You have to kind of figure it out along the way. There is a a certain actor you know is going to be a first take guy. Like, and that's the first, not even a second take guy, a first take guy. Who's a first take guy? Ram Kapoor's the first take guy. Right. Ram Kapoor's his his his. He's first. so good. Hey, but he's he's the first take. You have to prepare him mentally, put it into his head about what you actually sort of like want, and then give it, and then just have him fly with it. Um, in Jubilee, for example, uh, Siddhant is a third or fourth take guy. He gets there. Uh, Apar is a second take guy. He'll do the first take, tell him exactly what he wants in take two, and he'll get it. What This, is Ranveer? Ranveer is a fourth or fifth take guy. So he he warms up. He warms up into it. He gets into that process. So now she's a second take actor. She'll do a first take. Tell her what you want in the second take, and she's bang on in the second take. But then how do you do it, Vic? If there's a fourth take guy with a first take guy, <laughs> you're no. Just then you plan it accordingly. Then you have to. Then you know you have to know your shot breakdown accordingly. Saying okay, fine, I'll do this person first. Let me do the second take person first, huh. because they've got it out of the way. Then when you're going to the other actor, he's had time to warm up by doing off takes for that person. So two takes already done there. Now when you switch the camera to him, hopefully he will take another four takes. So you have to plan it um, that way. One of the scenes I mean I remember um, in uh, Udan there was uh, Ranit Roy and Ram Kapoor's big fight in the house in the second half. And by then, and this was a few days into shoot. So by then I'm like, okay, I know Ram is going to do it. He's going to ace it on take one, and Ron is going to take four four takes per thing. So All of Ram's takes, which is this axis, is all pretty much a single shot as much as I could. He's sitting, and the moment he gets up, the whole performance after that is one shot, where we're moving the camera as we want. And he's gone, and he's blown it out of the water. And with Ron, we've broken it down into smaller chunks of four or five, and then four or five takes each. And so I've done that. It, you can't see it in the cut because that's the magic of editing. But that's how you have to approach. But when you know their strengths, it's like. It, it, You sometimes feel, "Arey, why does he take four takes?" But if he's getting better by the fourth take or it's the fifth it. take, it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. So it's all. You know, speaking of Iran, you said something, Vic, that actually really broke my heart. You said that today you probably could not make a Iran or a Lutera because theatrically you may not have an audience for it. Uh, I mean, that's awful because those are just amazing films. Uh, But what what do the directors out here, sitting here, who want to come out and make cinema like that? What do they do if there's no theatrical audience for it? We have to get the theatrical audience back. This is a much longer. It's unfortunately we're in a moment in time today where, um, and we've discussed this so often. The indie, as we know it, and as we grew up, is dead. Right? Is is not. Um, I've seen some beautiful films this year. Uh, Pedro. Um, fairy folk, um, 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 the, the one with a shoebox, yeah. you know, some wonderful movies that are a testament to our times, where you're talking about a time and a place and things. Or even Achal, who's been here, who's you know, he's Gamagar and doing wonderful movies. Um, but where is the where? How do you have an audience go and see those films? Uh, have you have how do you have a paying audience? That's what there. There there's an audience that will come for festivals and sort of like see it, but how does a paying audience come out there and see those films? And if if you take something like The Disciple as well, which was I think one of the greatest movies we've made in this country in the past, at least for me personally, it, I loved it. It spoke at such a Tamane. deep level yeah. to me, and I'm like this is it's such a masterpiece. But it went on Netflix and it died. It died and it whether it died because and there's there's or died because there's no marketing or just died because there is no audience anymore to see a movie like that. At a scale which gives you a financial return, um, for me that is where it lands. And the more we've gone from theater to streaming, and this revelation happened a couple of months ago when we keep saying, "Yeah, yeah, theater is for there, and streaming is for you know, streaming is going to be for the more serious or the more edgy or the more out of the way sort of films." But the realization for me was like, "Damn it, that's our own fault." 
is because we stopped going to the theater to watch those movies is why it's sort of become the place to sort of like watch it, you know, on, on streaming. But now even the guys at streaming, because they're in a growth pattern, they need, to, they need to get more subscribers. So their growth is not going to come from servicing 0.5% of the industry that's going to give them those. Their growth is going to come from servicing the 8% and the 10% and the 20s and the 40% who are going to want, who are going to want broader entertainment because they have their own you know, back end to think of. It's a very weird space in time. The pandemic has made it worse. I think the streaming, the, the growth that it suddenly had has made it worse or better the way you see it. Yes, it's lovely, it's wonderful in the series world where you've got an opportunity to go and say, you can make a Jubilee, you can make a Dahar, you can make 20 minute comedy episodes, you can make so many things in the series world and it's fantastic, it's wonderful to have that. But movies have suffered, I think, as a, as a, as a result of that. So. My advice to any young filmmaker is that when you're making movies, aim for genre films now. You can get the audience back in the theater after, but aim for genre, aim for action, aim for comedy, aim for horror, um, aim for things that are unique, just visually very, very interesting things that people are going to be excited to go and see in the movie theater. I think creating an excitement for a movie in a movie theater is paramount at this point in time. Whether that's, whether that's a small scale, um, you know, 50 lakh film or a 75 lakh film that's going to be, but it's so unique in the way it's told that it's going to, it's going to be exciting when it comes to the movie theater. Or it's, um, I think Vasan, for example, with, um, with the announcement that he's made for his next one. With Alia Bhatt. With the Alia Bhatt one. Uh, Jigra, I think is really, he's, that, that, that for me, that's the sweet spot. Mm. Is that you've got an A-list star doing what is obviously going to look like a very, very cool genre action film, um, which, you know, is going to be a treat for the cinematic audience. I think that, for me, is the sweet spot that, that all new filmmakers should try and hit. Yes, you're not all going to get Alia Bhatt, but, but when you... Sadly. But take, I'm saying, take, I'm, I'm excited about seeing uh, Kill, Nikhil Bhatt's film. You know, it's getting rave reviews. Uh, everybody I've spoken to is Produced loving it. Produced by Guneet and, and Karan. And Karan Johar, um, yeah. But again, it's a film which is, again, it's, it's an actioner set on a train with, with no stars. But it's going to be something that I feel is going to be very, very exciting to watch on the screen. You know, 50 of those is, is what you need. 50 of like that kind of film for young filmmakers who are excited to go out and do that is for me the... the, the the future of the theater, of the theatrical experience, at least from a from the from the not if you don't want to go and watch the single screen Bollywood event experience, movie, the right? event movie. Yeah. But even the um, but what what's also great what's happened this year is that we've also seen that Gadar, Jawan, Pathan that were clearly made as single screeners yeah. uh, have worked. Uh, so is KGF uh, and Pushpa. But you've also seen an Oppenheimer work. You know, which is a sort of like a, a, a movie about quantum physics has crossed the not the easiest. And not the easiest. Yeah. It's a, it's three hours long. Yeah. It's 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 a tough movie, but it's made it's 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 amongst the top ten in the country generally from Oppenheimer like that, which is just incredible when you think about it. Uh, so there is an audience for that. There's an audience for Rocky Rani as well. You know, which has gone and done. Yes, it's not that it's not that classic single screen audience. There's a multiplex audience largely, but they've also gone to watch it, which means that there is a chance for everything um, to work. That's great. That's very exciting. What are you doing next? So I'm. There's a film that I shot called Control with uh, Ananya, uh, which is a screen life thriller. <laughs> It all takes place on a computer screen, so it's like it's. Uh, oh, it's one know, of those. It's one of those, yeah. Um, so that's happened. That's I'm just finished editing that. I'm getting into shooting another series in uh, November, which is based in Tihar Jail in the 80s. Um, and then I'm writing stuff, but I'm writing stuff for the screen next. I'm. I'm for the movies. For the movies. Nice. That's the next. Uh, aim. Nice. Well, listen. I have one more question before I open it up to the audience. Um, you do produce short films, and there are many people here who make short films. How do they pitch to you? I will send an email. You can just send me a pitch. Uh, a what pitch is the email? Oh, uh, it's admin at andolan.com. <laughs> admin at andolan.com. Guys, I would write that down. <laughs> A-N-D-O-L-A-N.com. Yeah. No, good to know. No, no, hundred no, percent. Please send. I, I, I think it's, it's really important. I mean, I, that's I, I like to do that because I think it's important for filmmakers to go out and even if, 
it's a story I like and it's a filmmaker, even if I don't know the filmmaker, if I like the script, I just feel that sometimes it's like, here, there's, here's some money, go and make it, go shoot it um, and, and do that. And I think it's really important to be able to have the chance because not everything can be made on an iPhone or a, at home, you know? There's yeah. some things that need a little bit of production value and I think yeah. that's important to also have, when crews work together and understand the value of a cinematographer working with the director, working with the production designer, working with first AD. I think that's, 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 I think we get very used to, especially here from what I, from the conversation that we've been having last night, you know, a lot of the filmmakers do everything themselves because that's the most cost effective way to do it. But sometimes you need collaborators. You have to work with collaborators. If you want to do anything bigger, you have to work with collaborators. Well, you do an amazing thing by producing short films. Okay, guys, who has questions? थैंक यू विक्रम सर यहाँ आने के लिए सबसे पहले मैं आभार प्रकट करना चाहता हूँ हमारे लद्दाख के सभी फिल्म मेकर्स की तरफ से आपको कि आप यहाँ आए क्योंकि हमने सुना कि आपका सेहत थोड़ा ठीक नहीं था फिर भी आप यहाँ आए उसके लिए बहुत बहुत थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर मैं ठीक हूँ सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है सर आपने कहा कि आप जब आप सेट पर आते हैं तो पहले आप आधा घंटा एक्टर्स के साथ सीन को डिस्कस करते हैं सर हाउ फिजिबल इस देश विथ शॉर्ट बजट मूवी इज़ इट पॉसिबल टू डू दिस क्योंकि आपका एक स्लॉट होता है टाइम का कि इतने से इतने तक शूट करना है अगर उसमें से आधा घंटा आपका चला जाता है तो शॉर्ट बजट मूवी में क्या आप कर पाते हैं कि और जो शॉर्ट मूवी फिल्म शॉर्ट बजट मूवी बना रहे हैं उनके लिए ये फिजिबल है सर नहीं नहीं बिल्कुल फिजिबल है करना ही चाहिए यू हैव टू डू इट बिकॉज दैट वो जो आधा घंटा है ना दिन का दैट दैट हाफ एन आवर विल सेव यू वन आर लेटर इन द डे एंड दिस इज अ फैक्ट it's there's enough which has happened where because you're planned and you're as a director you know what you're doing your cameraman knows what uh, he or she is doing your actors know what they are doing everybody knows what they are doing jo phat phat se kaam hoga na aapka is matter low budget or high budget doesn't matter aap low budget mein ghus jaoge aap pehla aap pehla short setup kar loge aap scene shoot kar loge fir aap scratch karoge abhi abhi next kya kare everybody is waiting for instructions after that this way everybody knows it's much more efficient thank you sir thank you hello sir hello ma'am uh, myself sumit Uh, my question is for related to editing like uh, as we know we make different draft different cuts and how do you choose the final cut and because every cut has its essence like if you look at the first cut and the second cut and the, the final cut you see that every cut delivers something different and how do you stick with the final cut and how how do you decide well, yeah that's a f- I, i know exactly what you're saying because that happens to me as well and my editor i drive my editor mad sometimes because i have 20 cuts of a certain thing and she's like yaar tab tu when you figure it out you let me know i'll do it um honestly it's it's instinct in it's instinct that also gets uh, better with a deadline so number one have a deadline it's very important If you're going to keep editing things without a deadline in place, that picture is going to deliver, or someone is going to give it, or someone is going to show it, or someone is going to show it, you're stuck. Because it's it's famously said, many directors said it that a filmmaker delivering a film is like you have to take it out of their cold dead hands. It's it's like that. No one, no film, no director ever wants to. No director is ever ready with a final cut saying that this is my film. It's only that you have to release it or you have to deliver it is when it it's there. Um, so number one, have a deadline. number to show it to other people as well is very important for you to have other people watch and ask them the right questions about what they feel it's not about ye shot kaisa laga ya wo cut kaisa laga is more about the fact that is it working are the characters motivations right are you believing it are you buying the moment are you buying this one very key moment if you're not buying it then i there's a problem there then you can sort of like start to work on those minute things that that get it and end of the day is like go with your instinct when you do a cut if you miss something you can bring it back there's no there's no hard and fast ki agar maine cut kar diya to it's gone forever it's not it's not gone forever until you actually deliver it you always have a chance to bring things back but it's a mixture of both you have to go with your instinct and you also have to listen to people around you because you're making it for an audience so just under, listen to what listen to the key things they're saying listen to what is working what is not working you can't go with if 10 people have seen it and they all have 10 different opinions and obviously then it's your decision but if those te- of those 10 people seven people are saying the same thing then there's a problem there then you have to fix that problem you know so you have to start doing that it's just an add on question uh jaise aapne bola ki editor bolta hai aapko bolte hain ki tu pehle decide kar le fir main dekh lungi uh 
what's whose call is the final call? It, it is and it's always call. always a director's call. Yeah. Any final call is always a director's call. I mean, you all, you work in tandem with people, you know. So you have to listen. You have to keep as I'm what I'm saying. Keep your ears open to understand what people are saying. If they if they if there is a genuine problem in the room, don't be obstinate about the fact that नहीं मुझे ऐसे ही चाहिए. अगर problem है तो problem है. Address it. End of the day is your call. You want to be obstinate by all means. It's your absolute right to be obstinate. As a director, that is your right. Uh, but yes, it's your final call eventually. Thank you. हेलो सर हेलो मैम मेरा नाम समीक्षा है और मैं एक फिल्म मेकर हूँ मैंने अभी तक जो फिल्म्स पे काम किया है वो मोस्टली रीजनल लैंग्वेज की फिल्म्स रही है तो मैं हमेशा एक डिलेमा में रहती हूँ कि जब हम कोई रीजनल फिल्म बना रहे हैं और उसमें हम रीजनल लैंग्वेज यूज़ कर रहे हैं तो वो एक बहुत बड़े ऑडियंस को कट कर देते हैं लेकिन अगर हम लोकल लोगों के साथ फिल्म बनाते हैं और हम उसको एक मेन स्ट्रीम हिंदी या इंग्लिश में डालते हैं तो वो एक रिप्रेजेंटेशन का प्रॉब्लम लगता है आप कभी ऐसे डिलेमा में आए हैं या आपका क्या एडवाइस होगा इसको कैसे डील करना चाहिए आपकी ऑडियंस क्या है इट डिपेंड्स ऑन दैट इट डिपेंड्स ओनली ऑन हुज दी ऑडियंस फॉर फिल्म इफ योर ऑडियंस इज लोकल देन मेक इट लोकल इफ योर ऑडियंस इज नेशनल लेवल देन मेक इट नेशनल लेवल वो आपको डिसाइड करना पड़ेगा कि आपको किसको दिखानी है अगर अगर आपको बोलेगा या मुझे फेस्टिवल में दिखानी है आई वांट टू मेक इट फॉर अ ग्लोबल ऑडियंस दैट अंडरस्टैंड्स अ लोकल फिल्म देन इट्स अ लोकल फिल्म विद सब टाइटल्स दैट्स फाइन बट इफ यू ऑडियंस देंगे यार मुझे हिंदुस्तान में दिखानी है पिक्चर आई वॉन्ट टू शो इट टू एवरीबडी इन दिस कंट्री फ्रॉम नॉर्थ टू साउथ वेर दे ऑल गेट इट देन यू नो दैट इट हैज़ टू ब्रॉडली मे बी बी इन हिंदी बिकॉज दैट्स अ लैंग्वेज दैट एटलीस्ट द लार्जेस्ट पार्ट ऑफ द कंट्री अंडरस्टैंड सो इट रियली इज दैट लाइक हुज यूर ऑडियंस फॉर द फिल्म बट अगर हम जैसे एक छोटे गांव की कहानी दिखा रहे हैं पर हम चाहते हैं कि उसकी ऑडियंस बहुत बड़ी हो अगर हम उसे हिंदी या इंग्लिश में करेंगे तो वो थोड़ा अनैथिकल एकदम एकदम अनैथिकल है आई आई एम विद यू ऑन दैट आई ऑलवेज फील दैट लोकल लैंग्वेज इज द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग फिर एक बहुत अच्छी पिक्चर बनाओ जो सब लोग देखेंगे बिकॉज इट्स अ बहुत अच्छी पिक्चर फिर वही करना पड़ेगा थैंक क्वालिटी क्वालिटी में यार मेक द फिल्म दैट इज जस्ट आई मीन इट डजेंट मैटर ऑफ द लैंग्वेज एंड सिंग इफ यू टेक कुरियन फिल्म मेकर्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल they are not making films in english they are making films in korean hum log fir bhi dekh rahe hain na yaar whether it's bomb parasite is the oscar winning the palm door and oscar winning film i mean and everybody in the world has seen it because it's brilliant it's nothing else but that aim for that hi hi ma'am hello sir so actually lutera is one of my favorite films like normally i don't like films that have a dull kind of appearance but that film like i really loved it Thank and you. i had a question like uh, it's based on the book right so how do you convert that book into a film and uh, the family of sonakshi sin and that case it's a bengali family so how do you inculcate all that like did you listen to some family story of that and then you got into the book or something like that so i wanted to know that. so the the book it's actually not even a book it's a four page short story by o henry which is based in new york uh where the central kind of conceit of the story about you know this painter who's painting these leaves for a woman who thinks that she's about to die yeah. um that's the central conceit that we took in and took it out so me and my writer bhavani wanted to do something where we like okay you, if that is where your film ends what is the back story to all of this mm. what is the love story what's the back story what's the betrayal so we said okay this whatever this man is doing is an act of redemption if it's an act of redemption there must be an act of betrayal therefore what's the act of betrayal um so that was one thing so then you work the back story from there and say okay these two characters this is the betrayal and then that's the redemption what then the second question became okay if we do it in the modern day how does somebody get lost in the modern day how do how, do, how in today's day and age can you really disappear and not be found by anybody i don't think so yeah it's always possible but it's not in today's therefore period so therefore okay let's take it back into the period I have a great affinity for Ray's films. I love Jol Shagor. I love Charol Lata. I love these are the movies that I that I love. So I'm like, okay, that's a really interesting world that one can kind of put it in. But again, so a, a, a juxtaposition to that world by taking it to the mountains afterwards, so taking it to a completely cold, forbidding place. So many things kind of from all over the place come in there. I am half Bengali, so I understand that world. um i find that that world of the 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 bengali the the zamindar culture the rajbadis that one would as one would i find that fascinating i think it's a it's an amazing culture um that was built up and then just like collapsed you know in the second half of the 20th century so and this, those houses still exist and so it's it's coming from many places it's not there's no one single um, thing for that thank you so much sir Thanks. thank you
Hi, Vikram. Thanks for sharing everything. It was uh, like a very good learning in short span of time. I'm Pabla. I'm also a filmmaker. So I have a question that when we write a script likhte hai, and we decide on some idea, and when, when we show it to different people, they have different opinions that this can be added, this can be deducted. So how to find a sweet spot between uh, incorporating all the opinions and still what we believe in, we can keep it. It's kind of like what I told him, that how many people are saying the same thing and how many people are saying different, you know, if it's, if it's 10 different minor things that don't, are not going to change your overall outlook to your script, then it's your call. Haan, yaar, main ye le this is a good idea, that's a bad idea. Then you sort of like start to take those. Um, you know what are the important things that you need to fix in the script. You will at some point in time have some, you will have a sense of it. You'll have a sense of what is wrong, what needs to be fixed, what part is the first act working, second act working. You have to use your own judgment to understand what those answers are. Sometimes people are giving answers on a tangent. You have to know how that tangent answer works for you and how you can adapt it. But like I said, if everybody's saying the same thing, then definitely address that and fix it in whatever way. Thank you. Sorry, guys. I know a whole bunch of you have more questions, but I have been given the signal that we need to end. So thank you. Thank you, Vikram, for you, your amazing movies. Please thank keep you. making them. And thank you to all of you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for having us. <laughs>